So in this video, we're going to look at the beginner's guide to the Boast. Now, Boast is an incredibly useful shot for the newbie squash player in both a defensive and an attacking sense. Now, first and foremost, it can be used in the back corners when you're struggling to swing. So if the ball bounces off the back wall, but not very far, and you're not able to take a full swing to hit the ball straight down the wall and take a drive, by simply turning your shoulders, you can take a full swing and you're able to drive the ball into the side wall. Now that's a great, great get out of jail free card. If you're able just to hit the ball into the side wall, you know it'll hit the front wall, you're able to keep the ball in play. So from a defensive standpoint, that boast into the side wall, when just by simply turning your shoulders and taking a full swing, gives you a great opportunity to stay in a rally. So from a technical standpoint, one obvious one is not opening the racket face. We've obviously got the side wall to contend with, so if you're hitting the ball into the side wall, it's taking pace out of the ball. If you're hitting the ball into the side wall with the closed racket face, the ball's gonna have a tendency to come down off the side wall, and then the tin comes into play. So the first obvious common fault is not opening the face up and not working the strings on the ball, not putting that spin on the ball. So when you are playing both, really think about coming underneath and inside the ball and making sure you're getting strings on the ball, you're working the ball, to keep it above the tin. If you come over the top of the ball and hit it flat, you're gonna cause yourself lots of problems and you'll find yourself hitting lots of tins. So if you are hitting lots of tins, just think about that technique. Think about how can you open up that racket face to keep the ball above the tin. Second thing that often happens when you're hitting the boast is you're just playing it at the wrong time. If you're just chucking the ball forward with no real purpose, you have a tendency to give your opponent the front of the court. You're giving them lots of space. You're stuck behind them. They can play a drop, they can play a drive, they can rip you cross court. If they're able to get into a good body position, get their racket up, you're giving them options. So be aware when you're playing your boast that it has purpose. That is a common fault that will get you in all sorts of trouble. If you're just throwing the ball forward willy-nilly, you're gonna expose yourself and you're gonna find that you're on the wrong end of the rally. Another thing that happens when you're playing the boast is hitting the ball too quickly when you're out of position. We've talked about the high three-wall boast as a defensive option to give yourself the opportunity to stay in the rally. If you do find yourself really struggling in a defensive position, you're not going for an outright winner, you're just looking to play a boast because you have to, and you play it too quick, you're going to be exposed. You give your opponent the opportunity to play that counter drop at the front. So when you are playing a defensive boast, think about playing it at a pace that gives you the opportunity to recover or playing in such a way that it genuinely has a chance of being an out and out winner. Finally, one other thing to think about is, are you paying attention to the next shot? So if you are playing the boast, are you giving yourself the opportunity to get onto that next ball? Are you taking up a tee position that gives yourself the chance to volley? If you play a great working boast or a great boast that drags your opponent out of position, don't just sit back and watch it. Take up a tee position, be aggressive. You've earned the opportunity to take up an attacking tee position and jump on that next ball. So reward yourself and jump on that volley. Don't just let that ball disappear off into a corner having played the great shot. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the backhand two wall boast technique. It's slightly different to the three wall uh, boast technique in that there's probably less follow through. We're looking to leave the ball short we're looking to put spin on the ball. We're looking to take our opponent all the way to the front of the court. Three wall boast requires a bit more follow through, a bit more pace, but the two wall boast, I'm looking to stun the ball in. I'm really looking to set up in the same way that I would for a drive and then execute the shot last minute so my opponent doesn't know what's coming and then playing that ball into that area quickly. So on the backhand side, I'm trying to get into this position where I've got the opportunity to drive and then I'm shaping up to hit the drive. And then at the last minute, I'm letting my wrist drop and I'm hitting inside the ball. So I'm able to stun that ball into the front corner. So if I demo here, setting up for the drive and then I'm just dropping that racket head inside the ball and I'm really working the ball with the strings. What that does, keeps the ball just above the tin, but it stays so short as a result of stunning the ball in with that follow through. So you can see the, the butt of the racket comes this side of my wrist, and my racket head is actually dropped in there. But within that swing, 
it's very difficult to tell the boast is coming until, until it's gone there. So the key elements are shaping up for that drive. Whether you're hitting on the, the back leg or the front leg, it doesn't matter. You want to show your opponent that you've got the option of the drive. There's some great examples here of Gregory Gaultier really setting up and then making late snap decisions. It really looks like he's got that almost a bit of a hold, the swing so up early, threatening that drive, and then the ball goes. So you want to make late decisions when you're playing the boast, but execute quickly. But you want to give yourself the opportunity to set up so that you can go drive or boast. You want to have the two options in your head at the setup because if you think you've got both options, your opponent thinks you've got both options, and then when you do put that stunned follow through in, the ball's gone, you're gonna be causing your opponent so many problems. So do think about an early setup, do think about setting up like you would for the drive, and then do think about how much spin you're putting on the ball, how you're able to work the face, and where that follow through is going.